name is Michael Famiano. I'm a professor at Western Michigan University in physics, and uh, I'm an outside user here at the National Superconducting Cyclotron Laboratory. Uh, we ran an experiment about three to five years ago to study isotopic observables of the nuclear equation of state. Uh, that's kind of a mouthful. What that means is we tried to measure uh, proton and neutron emission from uh, uh, basically a condensed region of nuclear matter by colliding two heavy nuclei. Basically what we were looking at was the equation of state, uh, specifically the asymmetry term of the equation of state. Now what does the equation of state mean? Everything has an equation of state. What that means is how stiff is it? How much do you have to push on it to get it to compress? How much work do you have to do to get it to compress? Uh, is the equation of state soft like a sponge? Or is it very hard, like a bowling ball for example? And so we're attempting to understand the equation of state of what we call neutron stars. Are they soft or are they stiff? How do we measure that? Well, the equation of state also works in reverse. We measure the equation of state by looking at the number of protons and neutrons that come out of an excited system. Uh, if they come out very fast, that means the equation of state is stiff. If they come out more slowly, that means the equation of say, state is soft. And that was basically the fundamental principle that we were trying to get at with this experiment. The, the, the result is actually still subject to interpretation because we work closely with the theorists who give us an idea. They tell us if you see something, that tells you something else about the equation of state. And so what we tried to do is actually take our results and feed them to uh, the theorists to constrain their theories even more. And so what we were able to do was we were able to take this result and tell the theorists, this is what we observe. The theorists then take that, and we also do our own theory, and say, okay, that eliminates several different paradigms, several different answers that we could have. The experiments that we ran are basically set up very similar to what you see behind me. Uh, there's basically a few fundamental things that we have to measure. We have to measure neutrons. Neutrons are about seven meters behind me, these large walls. Uh, we have to measure protons, and those are measured in charged particle detectors, which are put close to our target. We also have to get an idea of how violent the collision is. Why is that necessary? Because we need to know how dense this excited nuclear region is. And only the most violent collisions, the most central collisions, if you will, the most head-on collisions, will allow us to measure that. So we have these three fundamental components for our experiment. We measure neutrons, we measure protons, and then we measure essentially the violence of the collision by how many particles are coming out of the collision. Uh, you can imagine that if the collision is very central, if it's head-on, you're going to get a lot of particles coming out. If it's just a glancing collision, a grazing collision, you're only going to get a few particles coming out. The uh, everyday analog is an automobile collision. If you're watching an automobile race, you see two cars colliding. If they just graze each other, you're going to get a few particles coming out. If they collide head-on, you're going to get a very large amount of things coming out, large amount of car parts coming out of the collision. And that's what we had to measure to do this experiment right. The importance of this work uh, in terms of nature concerns neutron stars. Uh, neutron stars are essentially the largest atomic nuclei in the universe. Uh, they're also very, very neutron rich. They have almost 90% neutrons. Uh, imagine this, on the planet Earth, uh, the nuclei we encounter are more or less balanced. They have equal numbers of protons and neutrons. We're trying to extrapolate to a neutron star. They're also very, very dense in the center. They're about 10 times as dense as normal nuclear matter. If you take a teaspoonful of neutron star matter, it could weigh as much as Mount Everest or more, at least in the core of the neutron star. What that means is that they need to have some way of compressing all of these neutrons into something that weighs uh, several times the mass of the sun but can fit inside your hometown. How do they do that? Well, gravity holds them together. What keeps them from flying apart? Or rather, what, what constrains them is gravity. What's holding them up, what's keeping them from collapsing into a black hole, is this repulsive nuclear force. And that is what we call the asymmetry term of the equation of state. And that's what we're trying to study. That's what we're trying to simulate in these nuclear collisions. I always tell people, uh, especially when I'm talking to children, that I'm a professional failure. What does that mean? That means 90% of everything I do does not work. We spend a lot of time basically what I call beating on the equipment to get it to work correctly. We take it apart, we do something else to it, we put it back in. And it seemed like these experiments in particular, because they have so many different components, uh, uh, just uh, 
uh, do not work the first time. We spend a lot of time at three, four in the morning, scratching our heads, nodding off to sleep, having a dream about what may work right, and then coming back and working on it a little more. The National Science Foundation, in its wisdom, has agreed to provide money to people like me to do fundamental science. What is the practical purpose? Um, it puts food on my table, but how does that help other people? How does that help everybody else? Um, what I like to do is remind people that it was scientists, physicists specifically, who invented things like the CD-ROM, the uh, DVD, uh, the internet, um, they invented x-rays, uh, they invented the MRI. These are things that as physicists we do not set out to do. We don't get up in the morning and say, I'm going to invent something. Uh, we do get up in the morning and say, I'm interested in a problem. And by studying this problem, we end up making a contribution to society that maybe we didn't set out to do, but benefits society nonetheless. Uh, in the future, we hope to do things like uh, uh, commercial fusion, uh, basically making energy free to the entire planet. Uh, we hope to do things like increasing the speed of detectors uh, that has direct uh, uh, non-invasive medical applications. So while we don't get up in the morning uh, with necessarily a practical purpose in mind, uh, um, the taxpayers, the, the government, and the National Science Foundation agrees that this is important for culture and society. NSCL is a world-leading laboratory for rare isotope research and nuclear science education. Operation of NSCL as a national user facility is supported by the Experimental Nuclear Physics Program of the National Science Foundation.